And yet, instead of having an honest conversation about what a more democratic economy could look like in a country with the worst income inequality since before the Great Depression, we hear this. Listen up, all you Bernie Sanders supporters. We'll say it again. Socialism doesn't work. Socialism keeps failing. This is Socialism 101. We've seen it fail over and over again. It's failing now because of problems inherent to socialism. Myth number one. Socialism's been attempted and failed. But has it truly? Critics point to examples of leaders who took a twisted version of Marxism and implemented it to the extreme, like Pol Pot of Cambodia or Stalin's Soviet Union. But those are better examples of totalitarianism than anything else. As Noam Chomsky, linguist and man who lost award for most desirable lefty grandpa to a younger, hotter Jew put it, the Soviet Union wasn't actually socialist. There lies the issue when people say socialism just hasn't been tried and tested in the right way yet. Oh, it wasn't socialism because, you know, you had Joseph Stalin and the likes of Paul Pot and Castro and the likes of Mao Zedong. But there's the issue. It's what you call socialism in practice. You know, you cannot ignore praxeology. This is not something you can choose to ignore, nor can you you know, ignore the laws of economics. Uh, you know, it's a bit like someone who tries to, you know, ignore the the, the laws of physics. Uh, they walk off a cliff, they go down the way. They don't float, they don't go up the way, they go down the way. Well, it's no different, excuse me, to that of the issue to do with economics. You can't argue with the laws of supply and demand. You can't argue with the fact that socialism would require to use price controls and when it does, it leads to complete destruction of the information of price signals and as I said, no, nothing in economics is of greater importance than the information of prices. And so, essentially when you're faced with the knowledge problem, uh, under the central planning problem, there's no way for the government to know your needs and wants. It, it cannot know that information unless it's going to surrender and just give up socialism. Because this is the problem with central planning. It doesn't know people's needs and wants. It cannot know that information. It's impossible for it to know that information. So since it's impossible for it to, for it to know that information, since it's impossible for it to calculate rationally, you know, how much to produce and what to produce more of and what to stop producing, it ends up creating surplus waste, it ends up creating shortage problems, it ends up, you know, it, you know, neglecting the very people it's supposed to, you know, support. And this is why, you know, democratic socialism's an oxymoron, and even if you were to argue for libertarian socialism, you're, and I could go into the whole argument, perhaps in a separate topic, but stripping individuals of their individual rights, forcing them into a collective group, you are going to need an overseer to ensure that private individual ownership is never going to return. Therefore, you're never going to have socialism without a government. Um, you know, and, and this is the issue, because it requires an overseer to ensure that private ownership is never going to return. So this idea that you have that, you know, you can reach your end goal, meanwhile ignoring the fact that human beings are self-interested, it just isn't based on reality. Nor is it based on reality to ignore the fact that money only comes from two places. One, the private sector. Two, the printing press. You're never going to operate an economy financing it off the back of the printing press rationally. You need the private sector. So you are doomed from the get-go. You're doomed because you require the private sector. You can't get rid of it. If you get rid of it, how else are you going to finance the economy? The printing press? Get prepared for hyperinflation because that's where that leads. And if you argue for a moneyless based economy, you're contradicting yourself because here's the issue. Like I said with praxeology, praxeology is not something you can just ignore. Human beings want higher paid wages. They don't want to work for free. They don't want to work for 0% wage. I mean, that is essentially slavery. That's what you call exploitation to its extreme, which contradicts the very people who complain about capitalism and talk about exploitation. So you're doomed no matter where you turn to with regards to socialism.